Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white Magecraft deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a deck featuring 20 creatures, 20 non-creature spells and 20 lands, so it's very streamlined. And it also features a new card from Innistrad Midnight Hunt, which is Homestead Courage, a card not to be underestimated in this archetype. A 1 mana sorcery, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control. It also gains Vigilance until end of turn, and we can flash it back out of the graveyard for just a single white mana. So for 2 mana we get 2 different Magecraft triggers for all our different Magecraft creatures, and potentially represents a a lot of extra damage. Then taking a look at our creatures, one of the most important ones is definitely Leonin Lightscribe, a 2-2 with Magecraft, saying whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, creatures we control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Plays very nicely with Clarion Spirit, a 2-2 creature saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying, so the Clarion Spirit will help us go wide, make a whole bunch of spirits, and then the Light Scribe can pump them up to represent a lot of extra damage. We've got another 2-mana Magecraft creature with a Dragon's Guard Elite. This one picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell. And at 6-mana we can also double the number of plus 1 counters on the Elite if we're flooding out a bit. Then at 1 mana we've got Clever Lumamancer, a 0-1 that gets plus 2 plus 2 with Magecraft. And then a Monk of the Open Hand, a 1-1, that whenever we cast our second spell each turn picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter. And of course, given that we have a very low curve, lots of 1-drops, it's easy for our deck to double spell in the same turn and trigger cards like Monk, as well as Clarion Spirit, and that's also where the Homestead Courage will come in handy. And then topping off our creature curve is Mavinda, Student's Advocate, a 2-3 Legendary Bird Advisor with flying, and once each turn we can activate Mavinda's ability, letting us cast an instant or sorcery spell from our graveyard that targets one of our creatures, otherwise we have to pay 8 additional mana, and then that card will be exiled afterwards after casting it. So Mavinda potentially lets us replay various pump spells and fight spells from our graveyard, and that also helps us potentially double spell and trigger Magecraft in the late game. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, of course we've got a full playset of Homestead Courage, then Blizzard Brawl is the removal spell in the deck, supported by 16 snow-covered basic lands in the mana base. This can give one of our creatures plus one plus so and indestructible and fight an opposing creature if we control three or more snow lands. Then a charge through is a one mana instant giving one of our creatures trample and draws a card. Very useful if we can make a large creature with our various magecraft triggers, especially clever Lumamancer, can often get quite large. Then we also have the full play set of Snakeskin Veil as a way to protect one of our key creatures by putting a plus one counter on it and giving it hexproof until end of turn. Of course we can also just use it as a pump spell to get extra magecraft triggers if we're attacking for lethal, but for the most part want to keep up that one green mana if you're expecting spot removal from the opponent. And then uh, two copies of Wild Shape as an extra way to potentially protect one of our creatures by turning our creature into a 1-3 turtle with Hexproof. All additional bonuses like the various Magecraft triggers or plus one counters will apply on top of that, so it won't usually shrink down our creature in size. And then we can also turn it into a 1-5 creature with Reach to potentially block a flyer, or a 3-3 elephant with Trample, and that Trample is another way to potentially get in for extra damage. And then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Show of Confidence, an instant that when we cast it we get to copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell we've cast this turn, and we can choose new targets for the copies, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature, and it gains Vigilance until end of turn. So Show of Confidence is awesome, as it also will help us trigger Magecraft with all those separate copies, so a great finisher if we can cast one or two other instants or sorceries before it, as that will potentially represent a lot of damage. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, 9 snow-covered plains, 7 snow-covered forests, and 4 of the green-white pathway for additional mana fixing. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. A nice mix of creatures, lands, and spells. Malfin does not the best combo with Homestead Courage, since it already has flashback, but of course Courage is great without Malvinda as well. Alright, play Light Scribe, I'll keep playing out Snow Covered Lands for a Blizzard Brawl, let's say I draw Snow Covered Forest, I can cast it with the extra ability. 
opponents, perhaps mono green. Turn to Florahedron. All right, and there's my snow-covered forest. So, yeah, I mean, I don't mind going for Blizzard Brawl here, slow the opponent down, and then we can always cast it with Mavinda second time. So. Spread out our counters a little bit. Opponents at three. And next from Avinda should be GG. Alright, Dragon's Guard elites into their own Blizzard Brawl, fair enough. That might keep them alive. Although I guess Blizzard Brawl still does it here. Alright, so quick one here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn one. Could go Lumamancer first if our plan is to next turn go Monk into, let's say, a charge through. Lumamancer would deal two. I guess a monk would also deal too. Sure, we can play monk. All right, and then I think I do want to grow the monk. So we'll go Lumamancer, charge through. I can play charge through first, in case that changes my play somehow, but I doubt it will. Right, light scribes, nice. So next run, Light Scribe Homestead Courage is an option. Okay. Could also Light Scribe and Blizzard Brawl, even though we don't have three snow lands, it's still going to be enough to take out the wolf, which I kind of like. And hit for seven. And next turn I could cast three spells to trigger Magecraft, hopefully. Just a tracker from the opponents. And I'm off Inda. So Homestead Courage could go for Lumamancer. Could just go Lumamancer twice. And then Wild Shape, the Lumamancer of the Trumpets. So we can trample over. But I think they're dead no matter what here. To another spell. And our opponent scoops it up. Another blazing fast game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. No one mana creature, but some good twos and uh, a nice mix of lands, creatures and non-creature spells. And that's kind of the main kind of hindrance that this deck can have is not drawing a good mix of all three categories, which might make it a little bit less consistent than your monocolored aggro decks. So for now, I think I play the Elite, reason being I only have the one green source. So if I want to keep up Snakeskin Veil, it's going to be difficult to play the Elite later. Opponent on blue reds with a Smoldering Egg. Okay. So... I can attack if they block my Veil to kill the Egg. Although I would have liked to have a Clarion Spirit in play beforehand. Opponent blocks, I'll indulge. 
And we're left with a 4-4 Elite. Could still die to a Dragon's Fire. And then now we're hoping to draw more cheap non-creature spells to enable Magecraft. Got plenty of creatures already. Right, it's going to be a Prismari command, killing Clarion Spirit, that's fine. So do we want to play around a Sweeper here? Next turn our opponent could burn down the house, dealing 5 to everything. And um, if I play 2 creatures here, I'm going to regret it. So I could just go with another Elite. And then Show of Confidence can save one of the Elites at least. Thing that's better. If not, I'll uh, maybe go line scribe into Show of Confidence next turn. And yep, there it is. So I get to save one of them at least. Smash for six. And then hope to pick up some more Magecraft enablers. At six toughness, the elites more difficult for the opponent to remove. Opponent passes with their mana up, maybe they're gonna cast a memory deluge just among the draw. So I'll attack. I should have maybe even played out my land last turn, because if I get to land six, I can start doubling the counters on the elite. Another Prismari command kills. Our Light Scribe. And I'll play the Monk. Okay, so let's see if our opponent maybe has an Alvaron's Epiphany to take an extra turn here. Although they probably would have foretold that last turn. Looks like double Dragon's Fire instead. A lead down. But a Snakeskin Veil gets us very close to lethal. Sadly, it would just put the opponent to one, so I think I hold it and then maybe go for it next turn. Would have been a blowout in response to double Dragon's Fire. Right, opponent's gonna go digging with Deluge. So now timing is gonna be key. Let's say our opponent finds another Dragon's Fire. I go for Snakeskin Veil first and they respond, so I lose my creature. If I attack, they use it, and then I Veil, I just kill them. So, it's going to be tricky. Ideally, I just draw another Pump Spell here, and then I get to keep up Snakeskin Veil. Because once your opponent untaps with those extra cards, it's going to be difficult to come back. It's not like we have any Burn Spells to deal those last points. Alright, perfect. Homestead Courage, and then now I Veil to respond to another Dragon's Fire. All right, so close game here. Played around the five damage sweeper best we could, and then got lucky in the final stretch. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hands, not ideal. We only have the one creature. And uh, if that gets removed, we're in trouble. But I don't think I can realistically mulligan either. If I draw a creature, we're fine, or if I maybe wait until turn 3 to play Spirit with Veil backup, although that might be too slow. So it's gonna depend on the matchup. Alright, it looks like some sort of life gain deck. Light Scribe's a good draw. So... The combo of Spirit and Light Scribe's very powerful if we can get that online. But our opponent's off to a nice start with turn 2 Cleric, already a 3-3. So I'm not going to be able to wait until I can keep up Snakeskin Veil. That much is clear. So probably... Play the Clarion Spirit over Light Scribe. Although that's close. Which would I rather have survive, I guess, if they kill my creature next turn? 
The fact is, I can maybe more easily fight with a Light Scribe with Blizzard Brawl, not having three Snow Lands, thanks to the Magecraft as opposed to the Spirit, which is just a 2 2. So maybe I play Clarion Spirit first. And that's gonna get Vanishing Versed. Alright, Elites might be a better play than Light Scribe now. But yeah, it's pretty critical that we find a third land so we can start double spelling. Maybe play a Light Scribe with Snakeskin Veil backup. Another reason to play the Elite is that I use my green mana, so any land lets me play Light Scribe, keep up Veil. Second Cleric of Live Spawns. So the opponent's creatures are getting large. We might be able to keep up if we draw land right now. It's a wild shape instead. So what I could do is Homestead Courage the Elites up to a 4-4 and then Blizzard Brawl the Cleric of Life spawns while we still can. And then I have to decide if I want to kill the bigger tapped one or the untapped one. If I kill the untapped one, I can also attack. So maybe I just kill the slightly smaller one. So I also get to attack. Because I guess if I fought 4-4, uh, they could have just blocked with a veteran, so... They would not have uh, traded both clerics and other vanishing versus too bad. Another elite to draw. But now, if I play elites, I would die to land to activate Hive of the Eye Tyrants. Or I would have to chump, which is basically the same as dying. I guess we hope they don't, and then maybe next turn I can uh, grow the elite some more. We drew a sufficient amount of creatures eventually. We had the non-creature spells, but got kind of stuck on two lands, which didn't let us deploy our hand in time. So, yeah. Our deck can have very explosive starts, but if it doesn't draw the right mix of ingredients, it's going to fall behind. And this time it's land that was the limiting factor. So I got a chump. But can't imagine surviving here. Alright, can uh, play a monk and pass. But if they activate high, we're dead. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. A nice mix of creatures, lands, and magecraft enablers. Up against the black whites. Looks like a more controlling build. And a fateful absence on Lumamancer, that's aggressive. Think I still Clarion Spirit here over Light Scribe. Although if I wait until next turn I could go Clarion Spirit, chart through, at least make a 1-1 one -one token in the process. And then play the Light Scribe now. Sure. Uh -huh, opponents, Asper Colors. We'll just pump the Clarion Spirit itself, I guess. Can attack first. 
this wave they have removal. At least the Lion Scribe still gets in for damage. And now we've got to potentially play around a Sweeper. Got a nice board presence, show of confidence, also great with Clarion Spirit and Light Scribe. Mavinna could replay charge through from the graveyard as well as eventually show of confidence. Just gonna make sure we don't run too much into a board wipe. So with this turn. What's my play? One foretold a card, could be counterspell, could be a doom scar, could be all sorts of things. Maybe I should just crack my clue first, see what I draw. Maybe if I draw like a homestead courage, I can cast and flash it back. Another clarion spirits. All right, well, in that case, I think uh, I just attack with what I have. And if they wipe the board, I can go a spirit into another light scribe potentially. Opponent foretells another card. Also, gotta watch out for Alrun's Epiphany next turn. So, could I present lethal if I play light scribe? and go for a show of confidence here. I would uh, give the entire team plus two plus two, plus get a counter. So that would be 12 damage if they have nothing, but I have to imagine they've got something. If they counter my Leonin's Light Scribe, I would be relatively happy, all things considered. And then I can still go for a show of confidence anyway. Yeah, it might be worth a shot. Alright, saw it coming on the light scribe, that's fine. So now it should be safe to go for a show of confidence. And get a nice chunk of damage in before a potential board wipe, and then I can still repopulate with Clarion Spirit into Mavinda. There's a Doomscar, okay. And a Blizzard Brawl to draw. So let's see here. I can still use Mavinda in the opponent's turn as well to just cast the uh, charge through to cantrip if needed. So I don't have to do it now. So they don't seem to have another board wipe at least. So I could charge through end of turn just to draw a card. Or I could save it until my turn to maybe make it easier to trigger Clarion Spirit an additional time. Yeah, I guess we'll just wait here. All right, we draw a land. So do I want to charge through now or maybe attack first? Our opponent can block with Hall of the Storm Giants, but if they do, they would be dead. Unless, I guess they also have a Fading Hope for one blue mana to bounce my creature. But I think that's a risk I'm willing to take. So sure, let's move to combat. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand, sadly, is not going to cut it. This is better. And then... What to put on the bottom? The Lumamancer does represent a lot of damage with double Homestead Courage, Snakeskin Veil. Although it's also tempting to keep the Spirit Light Scribe combo. Or I could just bottom the Snakeskin Veil. And hope to draw more non-creature spells afterwards. Since we don't know what we're up against, we don't know how good Snakeskin Veil is going to be. 
But uh, yeah, it's a tough question. I guess part of it also is if I bottom the snakeskin veil, I can easily play the pathway on white, making it easier to cast double courage if we don't draw another land. Whereas it might be tricky if I need to have green mana as well. Yeah, I think it's between Veil and Lumimancer. And I um, think it's going to be Veil here. But close call. Alright, against Mono White. And picked up a chart through, so probably still going to play Pathway on green. And then... I guess I'll attack. Am I happy if they block and I need to charge through? There's probably no point in doing so. So, Claren Spirit vs. Light Scribe. If they do have a portable hole, which would I rather lose? Probably rather lose the Light Scribe. Another familiar for now. And another light scribe to draw. So now probably attack with both. And probably find just dealing two. Before playing another light scribe. But if they block I'll happily play my chart through here. Hopefully draw land as well. So far Lumimancer hasn't done much, but I also wouldn't have had a great opportunity to keep up Snakeskin Veil. Spellbinders can have a look. I'm guessing it exiles Homestead Courage. But Clarion Spirit would also be reasonable. Charge through has the fact going for it that we can play that instant speed as kind of a combo trick, whereas Homestead Courage the opponent will see coming. Spellbinder is also going to grow both familiars here. And we'll take four. Alright. So I probably want to charge just to draw a card. Alright, perfect. And then I could double Homestead Courage. Or I could keep one for next turn, although if it's in my graveyard my opponent could exile it with the Sun Gold to drop that uh, exile cards from graveyards. So that's a reason to double Courage now. And I guess that leaves my opponent dead on board as well. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Lumancer Light Scribe. And a nice mix of Magecraft enablers. Homestead Courage has been very impressive in this run so far. Just increases the density of Magecraft triggers you get, and that's all what this deck really cares about. Alright, so we can play planes now into Light Scribe. And hopefully next turn we get to cast some spells. Put on Mono White so far, but. Emiria indicates a more controlling deck, and that foretold cards could easily be a Doomscar. So how much damage can I deal here? So I could triple Homestead Courage, or I could Homestead Courage plus Show of Confidence, which would be the same as triple Homestead Courage, which would translate into 3 plus 1 counters, and then 6 damage from Lumimancer, plus 6 damage from Lightscribe, plus a 2 base damage from Lightscribe, so we're looking at 17 damage total, I believe. So not quite lethal. 
but I think it's still probably my best bet to try and get in as much damage as possible. And if my opponent casts a Doomscar next turn, I can play the Monk to try and get those last points of damage in. So, yeah, I think we'll go for it and then maybe go for Show of Confidence over Homestead Courage, since Courage might be easier to play later as just a one mana spell. Alright, let's see if they've got the Doomscar. They don't. Oh, that's good news. In that case, they should just be dead here. And the foretold card uh, saw it coming, not gonna do much here. So yeah, we got to see our green-white Magecraft deck in action, and it's definitely capable of some very explosive starts, probably one of the fastest decks in Standard when its game plan comes together. Now, on the flip side, it can also suffer from inconsistency if it doesn't draw the right mix of lands, creatures, and non-creature spells, as opposed to your typical monocolored aggro deck, which just needs to draw lands and creatures and be fine. But, you know, you do get the reward of some very quick kills and uh, potentially can even kill the opponent before they can cast their sweeper, which the other monocolor decks aren't really capable of. So overall, what do I think of Green White Magecraft as a whole? I think it will have its moments. Maybe if we pick up more flashback cards in future sets so we can provide multiple Magecraft triggers with a single card, the deck will get even better. Speaking of which, I think I want to try out a few copies of Guiding Voice in the deck going forward, maybe cutting the two copies of Wild Shape, just because Guiding Voice not quite as powerful as Homestead Courage, as it will not give you that one mana flashback, but it is a way to potentially find a lesson in the sideboard, which can then also provide an extra Magecraft trigger which this deck so desperately needs. For now, it's still probably not quite there, as it can easily be disrupted, cheap spot removal will still be quite backbreaking, and then you're gonna be left with a handful of pump spells and nothing to target. So, not necessarily the best deck in standard, but certainly capable of some quick wins, as you could see. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.